the occasion of this came from two different sources, or three different sources. First of all, this whole idea of the cosmic Galois group is running in my head from time to time. And uh, second, uh, I have a student by the name of Jean Rosset who does his thesis with Francis Brown and myself about periodic multi zeta value. Of course, it's far from it, but I was looking at the method, I, I look at, as there were so, some analogies, and uh, I benefited from them. And also, uh, so there is also some work done recently by the people in Lille around Ming. Ming. They are very good calculators, and uh, they made some experiment, uh, computer experiment, al formal algebra, not numerical uh, computer al experiment, which reveals that uh, it, it seems that there is, well, first of all, they, they develop a, a very elaborate asymptotic relation, and also they, uh, there is an algorithm which I don't understand at the moment, which could provide some theoretical hint. So that's one of the one some of the reasons why I came back to this again, and uh, now uh, also in the philosophy, I've been thinking for a long time about infinitesimal calculus using infinitesimal. This is in my head. <laughs> you don't have to understand to, to understand our analysis, but keep this idea in your head. Okay. And so the idea is that the basic idea is that you can allow some infinitesimal number epsilon some large number n in the calculation and you keep them you keep them instead of even when, when you cannot go to the limit and at the end if the results you obtain the explanation obtained are independent of epsilon and n then or uh, in the limiting case then you are true so that's a general philosophy and so just to begin with and also there is an analogy between I will just recall the famous example of zeta of one zeta of one and an analogy with the renormalization of electric charge or in uh, quantum electrodynamics. So the first, <coughs> first occurrence will be, thank you. The first occurrence is, of course, I remind you that zeta of s is a sum for n at least 1 of 1 over m s. And especially, well, of course, it works if the real part of s is greater than 1. I don't have to explain to you the analytic continuation, but in the calculation by Euler in 17, 1748, he introduces zeta of one, which is the diversion series sum of n at least one of one over n, and he called it delta. And he's clever enough to do calculation using this symbol, which of course is formally infinite, but at the end the calculation arrives. I think when I look carefully, what is is that implicitly truncate the series, but it may, doesn't make explicit the, low, the upper level, and at the end, every, the, the upper level disappears. So it can be, most of his calculation can be substantiated very easily. Okay, and it's very clever not to calculate with delta square, <laughs> because you have a double series, it will be more delicate. Okay, so, <coughs> okay, that's, that's it. But now, if you want to make sense of it, well, you can do the following. You can, you can, I will define sigma of n. Sigma of n is simply the truncated sum um, between 1 to capital N of 1 over n. And according to the euler maclaurin summation formula, it's of the form log n plus gamma Euler constant plus a certain uh, terms in 1 over n, 1 over n squared, etc., and plus uh, an all uh, remainder which is of the order 1 over n k plus 1, if you truncate those of you. So, and this is an asymptotic expansion, and of course, in of course you have log n. And, uh, but the, the log n, because the series is divergent, because the series is divergent, so you are not surprised that log n should appear, for a large log n is large. But what is more surprising is that in other similar expansion, you have also, even if they converge, when you do the calculate concrete and do the analytic, the asymptotic expansion, you find terms of the order, for instance, log n over n. These terms, of course, in the limit disappear. But the asymptotic expansion, so this is a diversion part. This is a conversion part. This is a conversion part. But in the conversion part, there can be terms of that form, log n over n, and more generally, a power of log divided by a power of n. 
And that's the, that's the kind of asymptotic expansion I want to consider. And also in quantum mechanics, it's well known, quantum field theory, it's well known that you have in infrared divergences are usually logarithmic. And if you want to renormalize it, you need them to be logarithmic in the field. Okay. So another way, another way to deal with is to introduce a, a, a function, an I1 of z, which is you put z to the n over n, and at least one, and suppose to conversion that z is a complex number smaller than one, and you get a, fu a, a function. But of course, it's very easy to calculate that it's log of one over one minus z. And if you are interested in Li1 of one minus epsilon for a small epsilon, of course, it's asymptotic. It's asymptotic. It's, it's exactly, I'm sorry, it's exactly log epsilon, which is again the diverse. So on the one hand, you have log n here, log epsilon, and they're very similar. So whether you try to regularize your theory by so completing the summation or putting this, well, it's, uh, uh, it's a bell conversion theorem for z going to 1, for z going to 1, you expect that. So z going to 1, zeta 1 is a limit, is a limit for epsilon going to 0 or log epsilon according to this one. So you keep the log epsilon. You keep the log epsilon. And I will give more precise information, algebraic information later on. So that's, that's the basic thing. But, and you see already some difference, is that here you have log n. If you truncate uh, the, 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 converse, uh, the, uh, the part which dis uh, disappears when n goes to infinity, here you have log n plus gamma. Here you have simply log n plus. There is a difference which is gamma, the Euler function. And this will reappear. So you have, will, more generally, you have two kinds of regularization or asymptotic expansion. In, in this one, in this one, gamma doesn't appear, but in this one, it appears. And of course, the, 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 the relation between the two have been very well understood for when people do u equal to beta value and the gamma. But <coughs> so, ah, OK. Now, there is, my philosophy is the following. My philosophy is the following. If I have an expansion of this type, if I have an expansion of this type, I can discard the part is converges to 0, and I keep log n plus gamma. So the, what to say, asymptotic, I don't have, it's not really a limit. It's not really a limit. It's an asymptotic. I will say the asymptotic of sigma n is log n plus gamma. And I keep. And of course, if I get relation like my, if I, in some algebraic relation, I mean, the, uh, at the end, the log n disappears, then, of course, you have a true relation. The same with epsilon. The same with epsilon. Here, I have only log epsilon, but it would have terms which goes uh, higher. OK, I give you one more, uh, uh, one more example, which is a little more sophisticated. Think of zeta of 2, which is, of course, sigma of 1 square, which is well known. That's one famous result of my yoga phi square physics. OK. Now I will repeat the same strategy. I will introduce Li2 of z, which is sigma of z n to n square. Of course, Li2, it's normalized in such a way that Li2 of 0 is 0. And Li2 of 1 is, by definition, zeta 2. But there is something interesting. That there are differential equations, obvious differential equations. For instance, the derivative dz of li1 of z is what? Is, is uh, I'm sorry, z is z, z dz li1. Uh, it's li1 of z. Z dz one one of z is uh, is uh, z over one. One over one minus z which is simply sum of n greater than 0, z to z n, what term by term derivation, term by term derivation. And in the same way, well, um, it's better to write it this way, z, z, n, no constant term. And the same thing, z, d, z of li2 of z is li1 of z. And of course, you can generalize li k of z and the, the, the this, this derivation formula works in general. Z dz, Li k of z, 
is L i k minus 1 of z. The point is that I will introduce the derivation delta z dz, which has the properties that delta of z n is n z n. So this operator is diagonalized by the monomial. And also delta of log z, of course, is 1. OK, so that's, that's it. And uh, so you can Li2 of these, and you, but you want to have an asymptotic expansion. So you want to calculate. I will not, uh, will not for the moment, consider this kind of summation, a truncated uh, series, but only this procedure, which is a Bell's procedure. You put a parameter z and then z equals goes to z1. And then we want to calculate the asymptotic of Li2 of z when z goes to 1. That means you want to calculate Li2 of 1 minus n c n. OK, so that now you will see that log, log of epsilon appears. It's, so it's, it was not clear that log of epsilon should appear. I just give the final, well, the, the method, yeah, the method is the following to cal make the calculation. Well, there is a relation which was known to Euler, which is Li2 of z plus Li2 of 1 minus z plus log z log 1 minus z is zeta 2. The geometric proof is the following. You take this triangle, you split it into three parts. Uh, so no color oh. oh, yes. You split it into three parts. Here you 0, 1, 1. You put here z. Put it in three parts. This part, this part, and this part. And you integrate the coordinates being u and v. You integrate v u dv over u v over the three domains. That's a very, very simple relation, which is more or less what uh, Euler did. What Euler did. So, and Euler used that to make precise calculation of zeta 2, because you can put z equal to 1 half, and Li2 of uh, 1 half is already quite much better conversion than the ordinary series. And that was that how we got an improve, some improvement. We got six digits of uh, zeta 2. But it's, it's not clear whether he recognized pi square over 6 at first. But of course, then when he used that pi square over 6, it said, my proof is maybe not so correct, but I have a, fine, I have a good reason. <laughs> my numerical cal calculation confirmed this. OK. So, and, uh, but then if you do, uh, if you, so that's one way to, to calculate. So that's one way to calculate Li2 of 1 minus epsilon. So put minus F, 1 minus epsilon, so epsilon, 1 minus epsilon, F log epsilon, log 1 minus epsilon. OK, now what you have? For small epsilon, for small epsilon, Li2 of epsilon is a power series in epsilon. OK, and beginning with epsilon. Then, then you have, so you have zeta of, so you can expand it as a power series in epsilon. Uh, you, can, you can, zeta 2 is a constant. And log, log 1 minus epsilon can be expanded as uh, we did before, I did it before. But you see so that you have, you have log let i2 of 1 minus epsilon is a constant minus a power series in epsilon, minus a power series in epsilon multiplied by log epsilon. That's the point. So that's just to show that in this kind of asymptotic expansion, you need not only power of epsilon, but also of log epsilon. And for this, also this truncation is the same. You have log n and n. Okay. So that's what you get. And, uh, but you need explanation for that. You need an explanation for that. Well, there's a blank board. Uh, one explanation, of course, one explanation is this identity again. So what you have is the following. When I define Li1 of z, 
which is, as I said, Morinus log 1 of minus d. I will take the branch, the principal branch. So I mean, I will take the plane, complex plane of this variable v, cut from 1 to infinity. I make this cut. Of course, the logarithm is the principal branch of the logarithm. I change z to 1 minus z. This is the principal branch of the logarithm. And the reason is that, the reason is that is the following, is that dl i1 over z is dl i1 over z is dz over 1 minus z. Now, dz over, now if you, if you remove this cut, the rest of the plane is simply connected. This is a differential form which is regular, because the only symmetry is there, and by, by standard theorem, a differential, a differential form, uh, one differential form, as a primitive in a simply connected domain. And you normalize it by assuming that the value is 0 for z equal 1. For z equal 0, for, for z equal zero you get 0. Okay. So that's it. But now, of course, if I do the same with Li2, and I say that d, and you have the following, that d Li2 Li of z is dz over z, multiply by Li1 over the, of z. So what you have now is that uh, if you make a, a double cut, the, the cut from minus 0 or infinity to 0 and from 1 to infinity, the rest is simply connected. And therefore, Li1 of z was well defined in this cut domain. dz over z now, of course, is because we remove the singularity. So by the same principle. Li2 of z is a function which is a single, with one, uh, the branch, uh, one, uh, the principal branch is defined there. And more generally, for you have similar equation, d Li k is dz Li k minus 1, and then you can repeat. So all these functions Li k of z are defined in this, in this domain, in this domain. And, uh, but you have even more because it's because they are given by power series expansion. You can even uh, show that they are, they are holomorphic in the plane cut from 1 to infinity. This u over z, because this is, this is uh, divisible by z, this singularity disappears. disappears. Okay. But in more general, it's more convenient, it's more convenient to, to use it. And now what do you have? In the, in the same simple example, the fellow IL2 of z, Li2 of z. What you have is that... Li2 of, Li2 of z, for z around 0, around 1, I'm sorry, around 1, has a form which I explain, it's result from that, by its uh, function is Li2 of 1 minus z is regular for z going to 1. So you have a function, you have a function which is regular around, at least around 1. And then you multiply it by log, or you, uh, you multiply it by... Uh, and then you have log z log 1 minus z, which is if you make this cut, if you make this double cut, it's well defined. So what you have is that if you look at the asymptotic expansion of Li2 of z, so Li2 of z is of the form A of z plus B of z, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, A of z minus 1 plus B of z minus 1 log z minus 1, 1 minus z, 1 minus z. So this is a precise form of a and b. The point is that a and b are holomorphic around z equal, uh, well, a is uh, def uh, defined by power series in z minus 1 against z. So what I said, a development, there are power of z minus 1 and power of z minus 1 multiplied by log of 1 minus z. Now the point, interesting point is the following, is that <coughs> If you, if you consider, if you consider, so for Li2 of z, this is defined in the cut plane like that. But now you have, a, if you approach the cut from below or from up, or from, the bot, from the top or from the bottom, the difference, the difference, of course, the two differences, this, of course, matches, but this doesn't match it. The difference is 2, two pi i, and the difference between the two branches is 2 pi i b of z minus 1. And b is about z minus 1 is regular around z equal 1, and even now you know that. So what you have, but, and that exactly is the strategy of a cat, and is so-called foreign derivation. It has a symptotic expansion, which have so, 
You start, the idea is as follows. To start, the idea is as follows. You start with a power series expansion around z equals zero. You make analytic continuation. And you, uh, you, you, you in, the, in your example that you have, the analytic continuation can achieve if you delete from the plane, well, here it's a half line, but you could have a collection of half lines. Collection of half lines. So if you put a collection of half lines, remove a collection of half lines, what remains is a simply collection domain, and you assume that the power series expansion extends analytically to the simply collection domain. But now, here you have the singularities. Okay, but what you have is that if you, if you expand this around this singularity, for instance, you will have, well, uh, this is called zeta, zeta well, uh, alpha this number, alpha this number. You will have power series, you will have terms in log z minus alpha and terms of in z minus alpha. So more precisely, in the neighborhood of z equal alpha, you will have an expansion that your function f of z is a sum of uh, phi, al phi, uh, phi uh, i z minus alpha, phi i z minus alpha, uh, yes, i from 0 to some d, multiplied by log of z minus alpha power i. And this is holomorphic around z equal alpha, z, z minus z equal alpha. So what you, that's a general expansion. So now you have this. So now you assume that in the neighborhood of some singularity, you have such an expansion. So the phi i are holomorphic in the neighborhood of this alpha. But now you repeat. Suppose that the phi alpha, and that's what I can call them resurgent functions, because the phi alpha have the similar behavior. That means they are defined by power series around this point. But they extend, if you cut the plane again along some half line, it extends. So you have a new, a second generation of singularities. And again and again and again, resurgent function. And so it's a very, very explicit way to construct the Riemann surface for such a, for such a, such a function. What you can have is that in the, if you look at the, if you look at the project of a singularity on the original plane, they can be dense. And for instance, you can contradict the result of, uh, of uh, Jacobi, which says that there cannot be a function with three, holomorphic function with three independent periods. So yes, you can have. That means you can have three independent periods, and a combination of the uh, integral combination of this period would be dense in the plane. But if you lift this into, the, into a suitable Riemann surface, in suitable Riemann surface, is discrete. A set of singularity is discrete. So, and uh, uh, there have been studies. Well, some people have tried to uh, to to, uh, to study or uh, elliptic function in this way. So that's the so-called resurgent function of Eckhart. But there is something interesting. Something interesting. And my guess is that the function you meet when you do renormalization in quantum field theory may be of that type. Now, what is interesting, what is interesting, I, I first describe the general philosophy and then I go to example, to a specific example. What is interesting? OK, now, the log, of course, the log here, uh, you are in the neighborhood of alpha, and you said that there has been a cut. So you choose, you have uh, this, uh, in order to have this uh, asymptotic expansion, the function originally with, without going to higher sheet on the Riemann surface, it defines this cut plane. And you have to, de to decide which logarithm. So you have to choose one of the branch of the logarithm cut along the axis, which is defined uh, to an integral multiple of 2 pi i. So the point is that this logarithm is not completely different. Of course, it's monodromy around z equal alpha. But the monodromy is has a hidden. The monodromy is has a hidden. And so what you have is that you could add two log a constant, a two co multiple of two pi i, multiple of two pi i, which means that you have a freedom to put a parameter u, which of course is in two pi i z. I'm just explaining, ju just explaining the monodromy, and now consider u as a parameter, complex parameter. So of course, now you see a group acting, a group acting. The logarithm, log, logarithm, you had u to the logarithm. 
and this is compatible with the calculation you do. So, what you have is that you have, well, it's a, well, it's a standard strategy of a, of a, a unipotent monodromy. So, the unipotent monodromy is that you, if you look at the monodromy of this, just around z equal alpha, so this in a small neighborhood around alpha, this is, this is completely, this is uni, univalent, this is univalent, etc. and you have a gap. So you have a group, you have a group. And if you have a group, you have a Lie algebra. And the Lie algebra is accessible. The Lie algebra is easily accessible. It just means that you consider this as a variable, I will call it L, and you take the derivation with respect to L. So, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the foreign derivation of Michael are just that. It's not formulated exactly in this way, Michael, because, oh, no, 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 L, log of V minus alpha yeah. is considered as a variable L. Well, okay. no, no, you can have, this is L, I, this is just L, I. So I have an expansion, so really I have two variables. I have Z minus alpha on the one hand and L. And I consider this as an expansion is two variables, Z minus alpha and L. And of course, you know that log z, uh, you have some, some uh, independence, which means that you can treat them as independent variables. I will go to some more detail in a moment. You can treat them, and of course, you can take a derivation with respect to L, fixing z minus alpha. This is exactly the foreign derivation of ECAL, except that the definition by ECAL is more complicated than that because if, if it restricts to the case where you have only a first order power. So uh, instead of derivation, you can just take the difference between the two branches. And then, but uh, the combinatorics is much more complicated in this case. And my definition is slightly more general than this uh, definition, but much easier to, to understand. So the point is that, the point is that when you have such a function, when you have such a function, then you have, uh, well, each time you have a new generation of singularities, and for each singularity, you have such an asymptotic expansion and a corresponding derivation. That means you have a Lie algebra, a Lie algebra which is, uh, which, has generated, which is a free Lie algebra with generator corresponding to all the singularities of all generations. Of course, this is familiar. Of course, if, if you, a, a simplest case, if you remove from the plane 0 and 1, 0 and 1, you have a domain with the fundamental group of this domain is a free group generated by freely generated by the two loops and the corresponding one. A free group has an associated pro unipotent group. I will not repeat all these things, which are very familiar, uh, and which were developed at length by Delin, especially by Delin. And then the corresponding the corresponding Lie algebra, so you have corresponding Lie algebra is a free Lie algebra with two generators, one corresponding to Z, one zero to one. And if you have log Z and log by Z, if you have expansion in log Z and log one minus Z, that's exactly it happens. And the fact that if you have a, a, if everything is a polynomial in log z, the derivation goes to zero after a finite number of terms, that means you have a nilpotent algebra. I mean, the action of your Lie algebra is nilpotent. So that's, that's, that's uh, okay. And that's my idea, that's uh, the idea of, so. And the, the point is that usually, I mean, they usually one, one, one describe differential equation of this type, this type of equation, and one applies the theory of Galois theory for differential equations, which provide you a differential group. Of course, in, in the example I will go into detail, there is a system of differential equations, there is a Galois group, a Galois group of differential equation, and it is the same. It is the same. But the difference, the difference in emphasis is the following. I don't need the differential equation, differential equation can be useful, but not for the definition. The, the, the Lie algebra and the corresponding unipotent, pro unipotent group is defined only by the Riemann surface of my function. So it's, it's, it's the same, but it's uh, with the same differential equation. You don't have to write explicitly a differential equation. Okay, so, and, <coughs> and the differential equation cannot provide you with relation between, of course, the corresponding Lie algebra in general and the action over the Riemann surface will not be a free Lie algebra. There will be some relation which is an interesting thing. And you cannot detect this from 
from the differential equation at the at the end. Okay. So that's what uh, that what I wanted to say, the, the corresponding message. Uh, So now I will have to be a little more explicit. So what about asymptotic expansion? First of all, take the simplest example of a low round series of the form sum of n greater than minus n, e n d n. So there is a finite part, there's a finite part, it is a sum for n at least well, there are three parts, there are three parts in this. There is a divergent part sum of n to minus n to minus 1. There is the constant part, n equals 0, and there is the and there is a, a part you can neglect, I mean a small part, which is for n is 1 to infinity. So you can, this, in this series, you can split it into a divergent part, a constant, and a vanishing part. Okay. You can consider that the vanishing part is not interesting, suppress it. Then you keep only the principal part of the expansion around, let's say, around the fourth, around the fourth. But this has one disadvantage. It's not compatible with multiplication. <laughs> not at all. That's a loser. That's a loser. But I will have something slightly different. I will consider, I will consider divergent series, but divergent series of the type I've considered before which is the following, a double sum APQ of Z power P and log QZ. And the restriction is that P should be at least 0, and Q should be between 0 and some D. That means it's a polynomial in log Z whose coefficients are series in, in, in Z. Well, you can consider conversion to formal power three doesn't matter, doesn't matter for the moment. So now you have a we consider all these formal power series. So formally it's C Z and you add log Z. Polynomially in log Z, and I prefer to call this L log Z. So I have now two independent variables, Z and L, that's my power theory as a function. And if you make a drawing, so here is, uh, this is a zero level, which is 1 log z, well, l, l square, l cube, etc. Now you have, you have a level 1, which is z, z, z l, z l square, z l cube, and so on. And z square, z square l, z square L square, C square, L cube. Now, corresponding to this splitting part, you have three regions. You have three regions. First of all, the vanishing part. All this. Vanishing part. Because you know that when Z goes to zero, any power of Z multiplied by power of log Z tends to zero. 
Okay, those are the vanishing parts. The constant part, of course, is here. And the divergent part is there. But the principal part, so vanishing, constant, principal part, principal part, and uh, a divergent part, a divergent part, and principal part. The point is the following, that if you keep the principal part, that means only the term in 1, L, L square, and so on, the truncation is multiplication. That's the point. That's the point. That's why we need logarithmic divergence logarithmic divergence, which is a special feature of logarithmic divergence. And I suppose that people doing real analysis have made that very often. Okay. So the point is that if you truncate, if you neglect all these things, you have a map from this thing to C to the polynomial ring. Well, formally it's very easy. You have C Z and you have a polynomial ring, a polynomial ring in, in, uh, on, in L over power series ring. Now you make the specialization C of Z goes into C by Z going to zero, and you apply this. And this is compatible with the point. That's the point. And then if you want, at the end, so Z goes to zero here, at the end you can do L goes to zero, if you want. And that's the final part. So when you apply this method of regularization by dropping the, by, by dropping the divergent part, divergent part, here, again, because you have two specialization which respect the multiplication, this, if you keep in this expansion only this term, it's multiplication. So the limiting value, the limiting value is depends multiplicatively, which is, of course, very important for what we do. Okay. Now, there is one more thing. I consider before the operator z delta, which is z d over d d. As I stated, that d of z n is n z n, and d of delta of l is one. And so n is one. Of course, the, no, the, the notation delta was introduced in the 19th century, in the 19th, 18th, no, 19th century, by people doing uh, uh, um, um, hypergeometric functions and differential equation connected to the hypergeometric function. It's usually the good operator. And because of this feature, and it's Bull, I suppose it's Bull, the first one who introduced it. Well, remember, Bull introduced not only the algebra, Bull and algebra in logic, but many other things. He was a master in formal algebra. And even his Bull and algebra was uh, an application of his ideas about operators. That's another story. So you have now this operator. You have now this operator. And then this operator is a sum of two, well, this is a sum, well, uh, well, it depends. This is true if n is log z, log z. So what you have, you have, now you have, you have this picture, you have z, you have l, and you have the curve, l is log z. And on turf of, I don't distinguish the term between these two. So if you are on this curve in the plane LZ, then this operator delta is a good one. But in general, you have to add plus the derivation, well, the partial derivative now, D over DL, D over DL, to get this, of course. And the fact is that this is delta when you when to want to solve a differential equation as with a power series expansion in z and log z. That's the one you have to consider. You can treat z and log z as independent variable, but delta as an extra term. Okay. But now, of course, this delta commutes with dl, partial derivative with respect to l. And that means uh, that's exactly what I considered before. Which means the following, that this new derivative, if you, work, uh, if you want to solve a differential equation in, uh, informally by means of a power si uh, uh, series expansion in z and log z. Of course, in your differential equation, you are on the curve L is log z. So you have to consider this operator, delta. But, but then, of course, dl commute and L which means exactly dl is exactly what I considered before, derivation with respect to log z, which is a foreign derivation of a cal. And because it commutes, 
It means that if you apply dl to a solution of a differential equation, it's another solution. So dl will act on the solution of a differential equation, which is exactly the strategy of, uh, of uh, Galois theory for differential equation, at least the Kreisman Willi algebra. So now, in practice, what you see, this picture, this picture shows you the following. So this is, this is, uh, uh, this is one. This is one. Okay. It shows that if you if you are along, if you want to solve the differential equation of an asymptotic expansion in Z and log Z, you have to move along this curve. But very soon, this curve is indistinguishable from the ver vertical axis, which means, and when you keep the principal, the principal development. The principal development, it means that you sit not on the curve L equal log Z, but on the curve Z equal zero, Z equal zero. And the function runs here, and then at the end, it becomes a polynomial when it's very, very close to this line, and it's very, very close to a polynomial on this line. And that's exactly what you do. And I suppose you, you did that kind of <laughs> to drawing. It's, it's very natural. So that's just to give a, to give an over, uh, a visual presentation of the same thing. So, um, well, another, th another thing which is important is the following. If I consider, if I consider, uh, yes, if I consider the full, op the full, op uh, let me see, yeah, the full operator in DLT. Now look at the cohomology, the ram cohomology. So you have this ring, you have this ring, and you have the derivation delta we can. Now you will look at, uh, you consider this as, as a Durham complex, which means that you consider H0 and H1. H0 is a kernel of delta. It's a constant. This is a constant. Very easy to show. Now H1 is a co-kernel of delta. It's zero. So H1 is zero. Of course, that's why you need the logarithm. If you don't put the logarithm, if you keep only the variable z, one z, of course, the constant, this is just a set of constants. The constants are the same. A power series in z whose derivative is zero is a constant. But it is not, it is not, uh, it is the co-kernel is not the same. Because one doesn't belong to the del image of delta. You have no power series which satisfy delta, delta f of, delta f is 1, means f is log z, plus a constant, plus a constant. But you know that log z is not a power series in z. That's the point. By introducing L, we have this, well, we had at first, uh, the, well, the constants are the h0, they do not change. You don't want, it's exactly the strategy of, of differential Galois theory. You don't want to extend the, the constants. But you want to remove the cohomology. And the cohomology, which was, uh, there was a, a one-dimensional cohomology if you have only the power of z, and you try to make this disappear. And now, of course, you have to show, the point is that you have to show that delta, uh, delta, well, if you look at delta, it will, uh, delta, yes, delta of, uh, Because of this, what you have is that the, de the, 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 the derivation the derivative of the delta splits into independent lines. Of course, this is a polynomial ring in L with d over dl. And of course, it's not that there is no cohomology at all. Every polynomial has a primitive. And the same here, because when you multiply, when you have, if you have multiply everything by z power alpha, you just have alpha to d over dl. And since d over dl in horizontal line is nilpotent, when you add a constant, it's now a constant plus nilpotent is invertible, which means that you have no cohomology. The complex, each line of the complex is exact except this one. Oh, yeah. Over the periodic, what we have is a polyphony. And that I want to, wanted to mention it. In the periodic, the question is, what is the logarithm, periodic logarithm? And it's, uh, so it has to transform multiplication into addition, as we do. It has around, around z equal 1, it has to be expanded as a power series. But you have a freedom, log p 
is free. You can choose prologue whatever you want. And that's exactly what was my motivation initially when I was dealing with Piadic. Because in the Piadic, you have various definitions of the uh, well, The construction we had by Fu Husho, and uh, other people as well, dependent on the choice of uh, log P, which has to be treated as, as, a, parameter, as a three parameter. And people doing uh, syntonic homology and very sophisticated things like that consider a variable which is log P. Okay. And uh, people would, well, I have to confess that I'm at ease with all this calculation, but the syntonic homology <laughs> and things like that. And the, uh, and okay. Okay, so that's what I wanted to mention. That's why we need the logarithm. The log and of course, when you have that, of course, you can solve differential equations. If you can take a primitive, you can solve differential equations. Okay, so. Okay, now about multi zeta and poly logarithm. Well, in the P, I think what you have to, have to consider as P is another variable, and log P is another variable. If you consider P and log P as more or less independent variable, and you do the calculation you are used to in analysis, it's not very different. But of course, to make, to give the correct foundation, <laughs> it's a lot of very sophisticated. Okay, let's consider now the, the multi zeta and the poly logarithm. The multi zeta, as we know, are defined by the generalization S1 FD, is a sum of 1 over a monomial, 1 S1 and D FD. Uh, no, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. And you have to make you have a restriction. You need that N1 greater than N2, etc., greater than uh, ND, greater than 0. In, uh, for a double thing, you have two summation indices, N1 and N2, and you make the summation for N1 greater than N2, N1 greater than N2, that this part. So you take the lattice point in this part of the plane, in this angle, in this angle. That's for the case D equal to. So, but now you, you need a restriction, you need a restriction in order that this converges. Of course, uh, no, uh, uh, yes, of course, what is dominating, the largest one is N1. And of course, if you discard all the other terms, you have N1 power S1, and you need S1 greater than 1 in order to have something convergent. So a convergent multi zeta is, yes, is a series of this type. Well, there are some people disagree, they sometimes reverse the order of uh, the S's, but it's, it's, this is my convention, at least for today. So, and you have a restriction, S1 should be greater than 1. Okay. Now, that's what we have. And you have a lot of relation among these numbers. They generalize zeta of s, of course, or d equal 1. Usually, s, which is s1 plus sd, is called a weight. And d is called the depth or the length. Yes. Okay. So, and so that's, and the point you have this restriction. But for many purposes, we would like to have also S1 is a 1. For instance, we had, uh, for, for D equal 1, we have zeta of 1. Of course, it's a divergent system. You have to treat it according to the recipe. Now, there are two recipe. The first one is to introduce the corresponding, uh, so uh, I will. The, 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 the relation, well, the not, the not the following notation. If you select S1, SD, you will introduce a word in two, vari in two, in two independent uh, variables, non commutative variable E0 and E1, as follow. 
you replace it by E0 S1 minus 1 E1, E0 S2 minus 1 S E2 E1, etc. That means collect right Ys is E0 S minus 1 E1, and then you have Ys1 Ys2. So you can consider either as a non commutative world in E0 and E1, or as a non commutative world in the Ys. And of course, this is the corresponding between a, a, a word in the Y and the word in E0 in one, in E1 to 1, except that here you don't have all the words, so you call X star for the set of words, or W, W for set of words, and here you have only the word of the form W E1, which end up with E1. And here, and here you have W, well, let's pick one, W E, and here W Y for, for the same thing. You have no restrictions, of course. But what S1 is 1, the exceptional case, correspond to this term missing. That means correspond to the word which begin with E1. So the convergent word, the convergent word will be the word beginning with E0 and ending with E1, which are this one. So for each word of this type, beginning with E0 and ending with E1, you can define numerically this. But you want to have, we want to have a function of a function, a polylogarithmic, multiple polylogarithmic function. This multiple polylogarithmic function is obtained, of course, the more general situation would be to introduce d independent complex variables. But we will be more economical. We will introduce only one. And so, in order, so, now in order to define Li, and I will write Li, Li of w, w to simplify, W means one of these words, either in the E0, E1 procedure or in this one. And now with, of course, only restriction is that it, be, it ends up with E1. And, but now, of course, I don't put it here, I don't mean that S1, S1 can be 1. Okay. And IW is the following series, sum, same N1, etc. Z of N1, over N1 of S1, N2 of S2, etc. in B of N2. Okay, <coughs> now, since we take Z smaller than 1, an absolute value, then this is convergent, even when S1 is small. And then we have to go to the limit Z goes to 1. But with the same difficulty as before. That means, the function that you have can be, and the function that you have can be defined in the plane which is cut from 1 to infinity. Why it is so? It's because, I, step by step, the derivative of such a function is a similar function with a lower set of indices. So you have a cascade. And then, you have a cascade, so the derivation of LIW is a similar LIW as is, uh, with a weight which is smaller, etc., etc. So going conversely by primitive, and I've shown already that in a cut plane like that, you can freely take primitive and normalize them by being zero. Okay. So what you have is that you have now this function which is defined in the cut plane. So that's the Z plane. The Z plane. Okay. But then you have exactly the same situation as before. You can look at what happened in the neighborhood of z equal 1, and it's exactly the behavior I described before. That means you will have, in the neighborhood of, a z, of z equal 1, you can expand this as a polynomial in log z minus 1, each coefficient between a function which is holomorphic around z equal 1. So exactly of the form where I think it's uh, exact, well, it can be developed, LIW of ZV can be developed as a sum, let's say uh, I equals zero to sum D, D which is connected, maybe not the same D, del, call it uh, uh, D prime, D prime, well, it's D is a D here or D minus one, I don't remember, LIW of Z, and then there were log of Z minus one to power I, multiplied by 
by i z minus 1, and this is the power theory in this paper. So, and uh, what I said exactly the same. And the point is that, the point is that if you want to calculate the derivation, if you want to calculate the derivation with respect to log z, or miracle, it's a function of the same time. And the function of the same time, but you, want, you have to understand, you have to understand derivation. So take the set, okay, and now, all the, now you have a singularity only for the equivalent. Now consider, they form a ring. The product of two such functions is again a linear combination of two such functions. It's a shuffle product, this combination. Now, of course, introduce one more in order to get rid of this restriction. That means to allow your word to, uh, to finish by a sequence of E0, you have only one thing to, to add to the stock of function log z. Log z, to, to put now the full symmetry between the two singularities. So now the plane is cut on two sides, two sides, and what you generate with this log z. Log z, and log z should correspond to E0. And log, and if you write, e, if you have a sequence, e, e0, 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 with uh, t times, then it would correspond to one factorial t log t of z, uh, it's a principal term, and also the, the main level multiplied by LIW, LIW of z. So the principal terms, uh, the highest term in log t is this or this, or log z is log z form, and you have lower log z term. The combinatorics is well understood. Okay. So the point, the point. Now, what does it mean? It means that now, for any word w in w, which is a word in E0 and E1, E0 and E1, and E1, and E1, you have a function li, liw of z, but possibly with a logarithmic singularity at log. So it's a, around the origin is of the same type. A polynomial in log z multiplied, uh, or a, a, power, a polynomial in log z and a power series in z. Okay. So, and you, so now full is full symmetric, and you can derive with respect to 0 and 1, etc. and you have Now, about the derivation, what you have is, Near the end. <laughs> Near the end. Okay. Now, you consider W, or rather, well, I will consider C of W, C of W, or C of W, which is simply, simply a non-commutative polynomial in E0 and E1. And I will consider a number of derivations. Okay, first of all, well, truncating E i on the left is called lambda i, an operator from lambda i. So lambda i of E j w prime is delta i j w prime. It's concrete. Similarly, uh, to the right, you have rho i. So you have lambda 0, lambda 1, rho 1, rho, rho, rho 0, rho 1. Now, the point is that in this non commutative the shuffle product is, well, the well, first of all, you have a representation. W is E0, del, uh, lambda 0 of W, plus E1, lambda 1 of W. And similarly, it's uh, rho 0 W E0, plus rho 1 W E1. That's the definition. OK, now you have the following. The shuffle product, so there is a new multiplication here, which is a commutative multiplication for the shuffle product, which has a property that all these operators are derivation. That's a characterization. 
All these operators are derivation, and both on the left and on the right. It's important on the left and on the right. Now, if you have if you have L i w z multiplied by L i w prime z, it's L i w shuffle double W prime of z, by which I mean that W, W prime is a linear combination of words, and I take the similar linear combination. Okay, so there's a multiplication rule. And furthermore, the differential equation, which, satisfies, which is satisfied by this, can be put in a very compact form as follows. It's, if I introduce omega 0, which is dz over z, and omega 1, which is dz over 1 over minus z. So the primitive is log z and log 1 minus z, as we expect. And now uh, the differential equation, I introduce, yes, I introduce the generating series, sum li w z w, which I call L of z. And now the differential equation in compact form is a dl of z is, uh, let me see, uh, dl of z, yes, is uh, e0 omega 0 plus e1 omega 1 l of z. So this is the, the differential of lz is l of z multiplied by some differential equation. Okay, that's a quick initial example of equation in a this one. Okay, now I finished. And uh, so, The point is the following. If I have a solution of this equation, if I have a solution of this equation, first of all, I can multiply L of z to the right by something independent of z. Of course, it's another solution. So I can multiply L of z by a constant called the g of e0, e1. It's another solution. But moreover, if I use a right derivation, it commutes with the left derivation, and you can see that it's compatible. If L of z is a solution, you can apply to it rho i, rho 0, and rho 1. And rho 0 and rho 1 are exactly the ECAL derivation associated to the singularity 0 and 1. So if you start with such a function Li, Liw, first of all, suppose that there is a singularity at z equals 0. That means there is a log z term. You take the derivation with respect to log z, you lower the order of log z until you get something which is regular there. But now the singularity is at 1. And you have a log 1 minus z, which occurs as a certain power. You keep the same and back and forth, back and forth. So the Riemann surface is uh, comp compatible with the general strategy of Eka, but much more simple. You have only two singularities in the base plane, well, of course, lifted in the Riemann surface. And the Riemann surface is quite easy. So that's exactly what it is. And now, of course, it tells you that uh, I can solve, now I can do in order to have calculation. I can solve my differential equation, make it explicit, and suppose that I want, I want to look for L of z, which is not a function, but a power series in z and log z, or z and log one, uh, minus, one minus z. I can, I can formally solve it. It's not difficult to formally solve it, formally solve it, which means that this differential equation has a different kind of solution. First of all, holomorphic function in the cut plane, or if you want, in the Riemann surface. But I prefer to see the cut plane. And then, <coughs> then you have, but you have also in the, in the ring of power series, exp well, of Expansion, I would say. Expansion in z and log z are here, and the same thing. And you have the same subject. Now, of course, if you want to go to z equal 1, if you want to go to z equal 1, what you have is that, all in general, in around z equal 1, li w of z as a, as a series expansion, you can keep only the logarithmic term in z minus 1. So you have a, you have a polynomial in log z minus 1, or log one, 1 minus z, which is the principal value of, the L of, of zeta, the corresponding zeta. The corresponding zeta is obtained by z equal 1. 
So, and now, of course, you can keep this, this log 1 minus z as a free parameter, and you can do order calculation. And at the end, if you have a formula where the, it doesn't explicit occur, you can go to the limit. You can, you can forget, you can formally make z equal 1. That's exactly. So that's exactly the strategy I want to recommend. And, um, well, it's too late now, but I want to mention another possibility. Instead of taking the z expansion, I could consider sigma w of n, which is the sum, I explain 1 over n1 is 1, etc., and d and d. I truncated as follows. Summation will be now uh, 0, suppose it was 0, uh, what was the, oh, 0, and d, etc., and 1, and here I truncate by capital N. I take the finite now. Take the finite now. And the point is that among the famous relations for the multi zeta, the double shuffle relation, the shuffle and the stuffle, the shuffle are already valid at the z level. If you consider function and z before going to the limit z equal 1, you have the shuffle relation. And if you keep the principal part considering log z, 1 minus z as an independent variable, you are satisfied. And on the other hand, the stuffle relation are obtained by manipulation of this finite sum. If you multiply two such sums with, with fix n, and you have a certain combinatoric, which can be very similar to the one I described, you have varying derivation and so on, and so on, and algebra. And of course, instead, the point is that instead of having differential equations, you have difference equations this time. You have difference equations. And the point is that now, if you take, consider formally development in 1 over n and log n, you can consider the, the difference operator, f of n plus 1 minus f of n. And you can have difference equation, which can be manipulated exactly the same way as differential equation. And there is also, of course, there is a, there is a Durham complex for this operator, which is not a derivation but the difference. And the commodity is a unit. Here you are. Because you put log n. If you don't put log n, you have a commodity. Uh, that means there is no solution of, your, of the equation fn plus 1 minus fn is 1 over n. And before, we don't, did not have the solution of z, uh, d, z, d, z of f of z is 1. You did not have, uh, well, uh, d, z of one, 1 over z to have similar. Z, one of the Z. We did not have a solution as a power theory. Here, we don't have. So that's exactly what we need to introduce power series, uh, series expansion in Z and log Z or N and log N. But you can repeat exactly the same. And now, now what mean have is by they calculate very explicitly, they have very good algorithm to calculate this. And they have been able to derive are out of this uh, some consequences of the double shuffle relation and up to weight 6, according to the table I've seen, but they have more extended table. They can show that if you put the two shuffle relation and stuffle relation, you eliminate and you get exactly the right number of independent multi zeta up to weight, up to weight 6. Well, I've seen, seen their table up to weight 6, but they promised me that they are much more extended table. And so what I said, uh, they, I, don't, I don't know their algorithm. <laughs> I have to discuss with them their algorithm. But there may be a potential for an abstract proof in the, in the algorithm. Because it works. That's what works. And they said, well, we, OK. So, and so we would have solved, uh, putting together with the result of Franz Brown, Francis Brown, we would have solved a, one of the major problems, that the double shuffle relation, the, uh, the, the um, Brinfeld rela associated relation, and the Rotendieck, De Ling, Galois group are all, what is the Galois group, are all the same, which is one of the major problems in the field. So I'm quite hopeful. And of course, I mean, in, uh, periodic, periodic, the periodic the point is that we truncate for n the uh, power of p. And then we get expansion, but taking into account the arithmetic, that means p. Remember, p is small in the periodic. And p squared, p cubed, is much smaller. And when you have p to the n, when you sum to p to the n, it means that you really make a, a very small sum, <laughs> which means that instead of having a sum, you have a derivation. OK. Very thank you. Very
This is not, I mean, for the multi zeta, it's not the way it's done usually. It's done different way. <laughs> for the, the shuffle relation are done by an integral relation, which is due to, to Maxim Konsevich, and the what? The summation, well, whether we extend the summation for any to, to infinity, this is a calculation exactly the same. Yeah, but what, what you're saying is that, okay, by this comparison, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I remember many, many years ago when I started working on that, I do A1 of my first talk, I said, you have two regularizations, they coincide. But no, they did no. not. They did not. And it's Boutet, Boutet de Morvel who gave me the solution, where you have gamma, not only the, the Euler constant, but the gamma function, which is now well known, well known, well known. Now, it's a bit of control lecture. And I said, I mean, the, what, what strikes me is the analogy between all these situations. I mean, renormalization, in, in renormalization the, the, the renormalization charge is a, 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 a polynomial is log of the mass divided by the Planck mass, you see. Yeah, but I think you mean that it's a, uh, in fact, two direct parallels to the Dirichlet side. Somehow, you know, when you take the Dirichlet side, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What you do is you take the log dynamic root, and you do, you can do it either by the Avogadro root, Aha, 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 aha. We have to discuss it. We have to discuss it. Well, maybe if I apply a strategy, well, the, the Dick's name uh, in, but maybe we can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I want a numerical value, I can have apply the Dick's name, the rise of the Dick's name limit, which, be, which, is be, uh, which is on top of the Dick's By the way, there will, uh, uh, there will appear a, a good exposition of the Dick's Mates in the, in the enseignement mathematique by Guichard. Guichard has written a good description. <laughs> this is historically is well known. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Non, c'est pas plus de deux. Je suis chargé, c'est vraiment relou, relou, relou.